Hey everyone, checking back in on the cryptocurrency world, and we haven't checked back in in three days, and the reason for that is because nothing has changed from where we last stood. So three days ago, what we said is there's two scenarios. We are either going to see a bull break of this resistance of 39.10, and if that breaks, there is a nice, not nice, lack of resistance up here from the dump, or we're going to lose the four-hour uptrend. If we lose the four-hour uptrend, the odds of a daily equilibrium with our high, low, lower high, higher low, lose the four hour uptrend and our lower high is set and we need to pull back and form another higher low around the 3800 area if we lose the four hour uptrend. We have not seen either happen in the last three days. We have maintained the four hour uptrend every step of the way, keeping the higher lows and keeping the four hour exponential support, but we did not break resistance. This morning we double topped. Clearly the bears and the bear bots are sitting right at that level to reject the price. So we're slowly climbing our way back up to that point. Bitcoin four hour higher low is 38.50. And if we lose that higher low, again, tightening daily range is going to be the scenario that we see play out over the weekend. If we get that bull break, we're looking at 4,000 and 4,189 as the next two resistance levels to be watching. So those are the two scenarios that we're looking at to happen overnight tonight. One of those is going to happen. So Ethereum on the daily chart is a little bit weaker than Bitcoin. We're pulling back and after rejecting from daily exponential resistance, we're now trying to hold it on consolidation. The four hour chart did lose its uptrend already. So that's a pretty distinct difference where we have a four hour lower high and lower low. Granted, it did not get much follow through because Bitcoin is still holding the four hour uptrend in my opinion, but it's still slightly weaker. So the scenario here, the key resistance is the top of the bounce 14109. And that's the level because of the lack of resistance after it if we get over it. We double topped at 140 and now we're pulling back. So we don't even have a tightening daily range. We already dropped to a lower low, which is what set Ethereum aside as being a bit weaker than Bitcoin back four or five days ago. And now it's showing us again on the four hour time frame how it is still a bit weaker than Bitcoin. We're watching the clear four hour downtrends, last lower high, 137.23. 137.83. I did make an entry attempt here on Ethereum looking to play off of the Bitcoin setup. So I wanted to make an entry on Ethereum and I wanted the potential that we get a bull break into this space. So I made my entry and then I estimated my stop level on where it would be for Bitcoin's four hour higher low because I knew that as long as Bitcoin held its four hour higher low, I want to stay in the trade bullish. And we had a scenario where I got stopped out because Ethereum is weaker than Bitcoin. So now I'm back to all cash. It was a very small amount of capital. And until we get clarity on the weekly time frame, I'm only trading with small amounts. And now I'm just back to patiently waiting and watching to see which direction Bitcoin is going to break. Since then, Litecoin has seen follow through. So the narrative of the Goldilocks three in terms of Litecoin being most bullish, Bitcoin in the middle, Ethereum most bearish has now been playing out for at least five days. And we got that beautiful follow through. This is what the bulls do when they get to an area with a lack of resistance with some movement behind it, some volume behind it. So once we break 49.11, we're looking up at 53.49 and the bulls just powered through it. So great continuation, weekly time frame, extremely bullish over these exponential moving averages for the first time in a long time, six, seven months, and watching for this cross on the weekly time frame as well. Litecoin continues to lead the way, extremely bullish. Currently on the daily time frame, it's an inside bar tightening up. So the four hour time frame, trying to maintain the higher lows. We've been holding on to them for the last couple days at this point as well. Exponential support is holding. And bulls want to hold $55. And then 53.63 is after that. So the bears who are looking for entries, if Bitcoin loses its four hour higher low pattern, we're going to be looking for Litecoin to pull back on the daily time frame, perhaps to the $52, $53 range to be looking for the daily higher low to be established. XRP continues to give us a daily tightening range. This is absolutely one to be watching because the tighter it gets, the more clear that break is going to be and the more traders are going to react to that break. So we have the lower high, higher low, lower high, just barely broke support, but we're considering that a double bottom. Another lower high was set, and now we're looking for the higher low compared to 305 to continue to tighten up. And again, this could play out into and through the weekend. So we might be looking Monday or Tuesday for a break here. And there's still a decent amount of space to be trading in. So we're looking for the four hour to establish a support level and shift that momentum. 
So the ways to play this are either just wait for the break or make a bull entry in the 31s with a stop below 305, 304, and hope for the bull break. But I personally don't like getting into equilibriums and hoping for the break in my direction. If I'm getting into an equilibrium, I'm usually taking profit on the anticipated move. For example, if I were bottom fishing support, I would take profit anticipating a lower high as likely as opposed to waiting for it to continue to tighten, 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 and then play out. So that's my strategy, but some people like to get into it and then hope that the break is in their direction. BNB, also a lead bull, huge follow through the past few days. Again, the, the weekly chart for Litecoin and Binance, you cannot argue that they are some of the strongest in the cryptocurrency space. The daily time frame is pulling back. Anything above 1085 is a higher low. Hourly RSI, a great entry when you're coming off a very strong bull move. That hourly oversold bounce is usually a good one for the first attempt. And here we got a solid 6% bounce and it ended up being a good bounce for oversold conditions. So at this point, we're watching the hourly downtrend, have to change the hourly downtrend with a higher low and a higher high to be looking for the daily higher low to be established and the attempt at continuation. So that's what we're looking at for, or that's what we're looking out for right now. And if we look at it on the four hour time frame, we can see that we are pretty extended to the downside on this four hour chart. So I would be watching for the bulls to make an attempt to change this hourly trend overnight tonight as well. TRX worth watching because the bulls have to change this daily trend. When we change the daily trend, we get our weekly higher low. And at this point, we've pulled back pretty solidly for the last five weeks and still healthy overall. Low bear volume, higher low on the weekly time frame looking to form. And if we can pull off this daily higher low and then a bull break of 2.4, 24 cents here, that's going to change the daily trend, and that's going to give us a big bullish reversal candlestick on the weekly and perhaps some follow through into next week. So change the trend on the daily and the weekly higher low is established, and that's when I'm comfortable getting into a swing trade on a setup like this, where if we change that daily trend, I would just put my stop below 20 cents and say, all right, if that's the weekly higher low, I'm going to see a decent amount of profit. And if that's not, then I'm going to exit the trade because I was wrong about the scenario. So have to change the daily trend first but worth watching TRX for that. ONT, setting up for a weekly equilibrium here. I would anticipate the most likely scenario is for a lower high to form compared to 120. And it's not really good clarity on the weekly time frame for this equilibrium, but it would be our high, low of the pullback, inability to break 120. We would look for a lower high to form, and then we'd pull back and look for a higher low to form somewhere perhaps in the 90 cent range. So very significant shift in momentum. Look at the bounce on the four hour time frame to indicate that the daily higher low established. When you see a bounce like that, it's not changing the trend at that point, but you know the size of the bounce is significant enough that we are very likely to change the trend after healthy consolidation and a higher low to form. So on this four hour chart, we just got tighter and tighter, a really nice equilibrium, inside bar, inside bar, bull break and volume spike, inside bar, inside bar, bull break, inside bar, bear break, Nice inside bars on this move up, but it's keeping the four-hour uptrend in control, and it was an equilibrium on the hourly time frame where we just saw a tightening range and clear bull break. So that's that's one where you get nice, clear trading. I've talked about how trading in the cryptocurrency space is very difficult, and there's tons of fake outs, but when you look at a setup like this, I mean, the last three days on ONT is really clear and exactly what you want to see in terms of technical setups when you are a trader. So anything above 959 is a four hour higher low. And when we lose the four hour uptrend, our daily lower high will be set and we'll look for the daily higher low to have to form. EOS USD pulling back on the daily chart. So we did get to the space that the Bitcoin and Ethereum bulls want to get to. Breaking above 379 entered an area with a lack of resistance. We saw a very solid 8% follow through up to $4 psychological resistance where we rejected. So we're looking at the four hour trend. Is it still in an uptrend? And I would say right here, we lost the four hour uptrend, but the bears haven't gotten much follow through on the pullback. So we had the high, this low is that pullback for the higher low, lower high, sideways, bear break, but no follow through. So that's favoring the bulls on healthy daily consolidation. who are going to try and see continuation, especially if Bitcoin can break 39.10, that double top of resistance. So EOS, even if we don't get any follow through, we're going to still look for a daily higher low to form. This bounce is significant enough to look for that shift in trend. And the weekly time frame is hoping our higher low is already set because if that's all the consolidation that we're going to see, 
that is going to favor the bulls. So it's going to be an interesting week coming up to see whether Bitcoin is able to break its weekly downtrend and break that 4,200 level. Because if it does, a lot of these names are positioned to respond very well to that. And wrapping it up with NEO. So again, NEO had a clear daily lower high pattern. The bounce is significant at this point. Resistance was 944 and we have not broken that. So just like Bitcoin and Ethereum, we haven't entered the area of a lack of resistance and the bulls need a, ideally a daily higher low and higher high to change the trend. And that will tell us our weekly higher low has been established. So we have our low, higher the bounce, higher low, did get the higher high, trying for another higher low and to see continuation from here. But we have to change the daily trend with a little higher low and higher high. So on the four hour trend to compare it to Bitcoin, we do still have an uptrend has not been lost over the past few days. Most important support is 885 and 884. When I have two support levels within a penny of each other, I'm going to choose the lower level as my support that I'm playing off of to give the bulls a little bit of wiggle room. So for the names that are still maintaining their four-hour uptrends, that's the key pattern to be watching. And some names have a better setup than others. ONT, a little bit extended. So I'm going to categorize ONT in its own. We're going to look at NEO and EOS, they're comparable to Bitcoin and Ethereum and their four-hour setups. Binance is in its own world, very bullish. Going to be watching the hourly tightening range on Binance for a change. TRX has to change the daily trend for our weekly signal that the bulls are looking for. And everybody else, let's see, XRP's got its own daily equilibrium going on. And all these other names on the left side are fairly similar setups with the four-hour uptrend to be watching. So I hope you have a good rest of your Friday. We'll check back in once this break does occur, probably tomorrow. And we'll see you then. So now we got chapter five as we are heading across the country. We left off in Missouri, skipping across Kansas, heading to Boulder, Colorado. I've been on the road at about a month at this point. And in Boulder, I had lined up a spot for woofing. And I've talked about that a few times, worldwide opportunities on organic farms. And they have every end of the spectrum where you have full-fledged farms that go to markets and you have just older women living by themselves who can't keep track or can't keep up with their garden and the yard work and the hard labor and splitting wood and they just need help. So you exchange 25, 30 hours a week of labor for room and board. And I cannot stress enough how awesome this is and how everybody should do it. And I've done it maybe six different times around the country and it's completely immersing yourself in someone else's lifestyle. So, you know, learning to forage mushrooms in West Virginia or discovering you know, secret little watering holes up in Northern California. There's just so much, even the books that people have and reading their books in the downtime, eating their food and watching, you know, how they incorporate the local produce that's that's out in the woods, you know, scavenging around and how they put, you know, lamb's quarter in their meals and things like that. You just learn so much so quickly. So I would generally break it up. I do a month on the road, then I do maybe two weeks of woofing and that allows me to have a bed and you know have a shower and have nice food when i was saying i was min living minimalist i definitely was where you know i was eating cold cans of soup in my cars at some points so when you get a nice home cooked meal that can make all the difference in the world so after a month i was heading that way towards boulder there were a couple things in kansas but the green is what you want to see because green is national parks national forests places to camp and you can see kansas is just void of all of that and it's really flat but it's nice when you get close to the west border and you see the big looming rocky mountains ahead and it's just this constant growing excitement and excitement grows with the size of the mountains as you approach them this was one of the stops in Kansas where we had an overhang and some kind of barn swallow, mud swallow, birds were making these little nests and they were just going nuts. And I said, I love observing nature, but just watching, you know, a hundred of these birds whip in and out of here and chattering and just party time and uh, watching how they all interact was very interesting. And they had some of these dead forests that are swamplands. And I always like these landscapes. I think it's a nice, cool, eerie uh, spot. Nice sunset reflecting off the dead trees in the water. So then getting, there's a fuzzy, blurry baby bunny, but got over to Woofing. This was her house. This was her backyard and just incredible view. And my job was to take care of Nina, who was a border collie mix. And she just wanted to work. She wanted a job. She wanted to run. So my job was to take her out for, you know, a half hour every day 
throw her the ball and just run with her. So that was a, an awesome task. You know, part of my 30 hours is just, you know, seven hours a week taking this dog out to play with her. And she loved playing with that ball. So in the backyard, we just had raised beds. So again, it's not a farm. This was just a little homestead and it was just a, a single woman who needed some help. And so she has all these beans growing here and garlic and probably eight different beds that had been pretty well established and, and run for years. And then around the other side of the house, there were all these perennials and cool flowers and things. So it was an awesome house. And after being there for a week, and, you know, just doing my routine and getting ready to, to keep going on my way, she gave me the offer, hey, do you want to house sit? I need to leave for a month. And do you want to hold down the house and, and keep the plants alive and take care of Nina? And I said, absolutely. So I went and adventured in the Rocky Mountain National Park and explored a little bit of Colorado and then came back and stayed here for a month and explored Boulder. So that was a nice, pleasant surprise that certainly extended the time of my road trip. But that's another great thing about road trips where, you know, if you don't have to have these hard, fast plans of when you have to be in point A, point B, I was just drifting. You know, I knew I wanted to hit up this destination, that destination, but whether it takes two months or a year, that doesn't matter. And it's the kind of thing where some of the best spots that I went to on this entire road trip were from word of mouth, from other hikers saying, hey, you need to check out this hot spring. You know, it's just three hours down the road. Next thing I know, I'm staying at this hot spring for planning on two nights and I'm there for four nights because of how awesome it is. So just being able to completely upend your plans and be very versatile and free flowing was a very awesome experience as well. So next time we'll check in and go through some Colorado adventures. Again, Colorado and Utah were by far the highlights. So much to see and so many things to do and so much nature and some great people. So I hope you do good things. Have a great day and we'll see you Friday. That's nice. So chapter six of the adventure, we had headed west. We hit Boulder and I was staying with that woman. Got the house sitting gig for a month. And I actually did trade a bit when I had that house sitting gig because I had stable internet and I had a routine and I could be more focused on it. So I was still trading penny stocks at that point. This was maybe five, six years ago. And I had a couple weeks until I started house sitting. So I explored Colorado. That's the kind of green you want to see. Tons of places to camp, tons of things to see. Utah and Colorado is a great chunk of land. And I haven't explored northern Utah. I wanted to. I had a road trip that was planned through northern Utah, through the northwest part of the country. I'm going to have to put that on my next to-do list later this summer. First, I'm going to be going back to Colorado in May. So I will bring my camera. All these pictures are with my phone but I'll bring my camera and I'm going to explore a bit more of Colorado and see some shows at the Red Rocks and have some fun, but that's for another time. So this time around, plenty of places to camp. My favorite part about Colorado is that there are rivers, so many places coming off of mountains. And so that made two things very easy. Number one, getting the fresh water and uh, filtering it to drink. And then number two, being able to have things. You don't want to be, you know, have a cooler and have food that needs to be kept cool when you're road tripping across the country. It's just constantly needing ice and then those plastic bags. And it's just when you have ice cold water coming off the mountain, I would just pull over and fill up my cooler with cold water and then put stuff that needed refrigeration in it. And then, you know, 12 hours later, 20 hours later, I can just dump that water out and refill it with other cold water. So the water in, in Colorado is not for swimming. You can jump in and enjoy it for a brief amount of time, but it is very cold coming off of those mountains, especially in May and June. And I believe it was June now, heading towards July. But tons of great places to camp and lots of solitude. My favorite part about getting to a place that was a couple miles into the trail and had a nice clearing like this where, you know, it's just a lake and, and the forest is knowing that at about 4 or 5 p.m., no new people are going to be getting up to that spot. And that's because you can't hike up there and have enough time to get back before it's getting dark. So there's this, this lull time before it gets dark where everybody is stops coming up. And so you have it to yourself during that dusk time when the sun's going down. This is the baby elk that I snuck up on. And again, it's just, just being still and very slowly moving. It's just a game of you know, watching animals and trying to get close to them. There were no mothers or fathers around, which was good. <laughs> so there's plenty of spots like this all over. And I can't stress enough how if you go to freecampingsites.net, 
and you look at BLM land, and BLM land is the same as national forest land to a certain degree. It's government owned. There's very little regulation on camping in terms of where you can camp. And it's just this big public lands that we have, you know, to take advantage of. This, I believe, is getting towards Rocky Mountain National Park, one of the spots near the entrance. These are marmots, so pretty much a giant squirrel, if I had to describe them, somewhat like a raccoon. But they would live under the rocks, and you could tell what rocks they lived under because the rim around it was all bright green and lush, and the grass, you know, immediately after the rocks was a little bit dry and arid. And that's because of their waste. They just pop out of their hole and they go to the bathroom and that, you know, fertilizes all the plants that are around their rock. So you can tell where they live and they were curious and friendly. If you pee on a rock, they really enjoy the salt and the water and they'll run and lick it up. And they, they, their lives, I mean, they just live in areas like this where they, that's all they know. That's their life. They sit on their rock and they overlook the expanse. There would be times where I would be alone in the spot and I would sit there and a marmot would jump up on his rock and he'd just be observing everything with me and just hanging out in the dusk. And they get curious if you don't move. So if I sat there for an hour, he might you know, get used to my presence and come and check me out and see what's going on once he realizes that I'm not a threat. So that's the start of Colorado. We'll continue going westward over the Rocky Mountain National Park. Looking forward to going back there again in May and open to any suggestions of places. I'm probably going to hit up Telluride, Steamboat Springs, and Rocky Mountain National Park, Boulder. I'm going to see Papadocio in Red Rocks. I got a buddy in that band. And Random Rab and Polish Ambassador opening up. So that should be a fun show. That'll be in a few months, and I'll be sure to bring you all along. So have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you over the weekend.